Hi, I'm Mike from Hackaday. I'm here at uh, Bay Area Maker Faire 2016 uh, with someone who seems to appear every single year in our coverage because he does awesome work. This is Eric from Tube, Tube, Tube Time. Eric, what have you done this year? You won't believe what I've done here. This is a 6502 microprocessor, and it's built out of discrete transistors, thousands of them, thousands of them. And it works. It runs code, and it has lots of LEDs. You will love just staring at those LEDs. It is mesmerizing. So when do you say to yourself, I want to lay out a design of an old processor and use thousands of discrete transistors to do that? How does that happen? I really, really did not want to do that. In fact, the entire way, I was trying to prove to myself that there is no way this could possibly work. Because, to be honest, the layout of that magnitude is very tedious. Putting down thousands of components, thousands of traces to connect it all together, oh, it's just, it's just terrible. So, first I ran some simulations to see if the basic idea was even possible. Uh, I also ran a, a design, a very, very simple board, very simple purple board, with a bunch of transistors on it. And unfortunately for me, the program counter worked. And so at that point, with a sinking feeling, I knew that I had to go and do the entire chip. So what kind of limitations would have made it impossible? So the biggest problem is that the 6502 design uses dynamic NMOS, which means that there are these series transistors that gate signals going into FETs. They use it for data storage. Uh, think of something like a DRAM cell, where you're storing charge on the gate of a MOSFET. And they use a transmission gate FET in front of that to load a new bit into that register. What can happen though is that, first of all, you need a four terminal MOSFET for that transmission gate, and those are really hard to find nowadays. I found one, and I, that's the one that I'm using. So that's the first problem. The second problem is that you've got to worry about all the effects of electrostatic discharge, of board leakage. That's the reason that I built that program counter. I wanted to see if the carry propagation would even work. And it did. That's great. So how faithful do you think it is to the original 6502 architecture? This is an exact transistor by transistor replica. It is literally as close as you can get to a 6502. How does it compare in power consumption? Except for the LEDs. Oh, uh, uh, well, yes. Yeah. The LEDs. The original does not have them, unfortunately. That okay. would be kind of neat. So power consumption is about a factor of 10. So the original pulled uh, maybe 200 milliamps during uh, typical operation. This one pulls about 2 amps including the LEDs. And uh, so what are the LEDs showing? So the LEDs show the status of all of the registers. So X, Y, accumulator, a couple of hidden registers that uh, you only find by going through the schematic. And also the data path control lines. Those are all the wires that tell the registers what to do, to put data onto a bus or to take their data off of a data bus or instruct the ALU to do basic operations such as add and subtract and or XOR, that kind of thing. That, that's really incredible. So uh, where do you go from here? So you have one working right here. Are there any others working? And what if people want to get their hands on one of them? So this is the only one working in the world right now. <laughs> I have another board at home, which is in the original ESD wrapping. I will not open it until I completely finish the bring up here. Uh, there are probably a couple little issues here and there that I need to work through first. And uh, I'll take the other board out of its wrap, bring that up, make sure it works consistently. Uh, the next step is to uh, see what kind of interest people have possibly in some kind of a product. So, who knows? <laughs> uh, and so you were telling me before this is a four-layer board. Uh, did you have any uh, mistakes that you had to roll with in, in the uh, design itself? So I did run into some issues. The buses on the 6502 have what are called pre-charged MOSFETs. Basically, every alternate cycle, the 6502 takes those buses and charges them up to 5 volts using the pre-charged transistors. At the same time, they also turn on transistors that put zeros onto the bus. That means that you can have both a pull-up and a pull-down transistor on at the same time. In the original NMOS, it worked because the pull-ups were quite weak and designed to be overpowered by the pull-downs. In my design, I forgot to weaken the pull-ups. And so the two MOSFETs got together and had a little battle, and uh, I quickly noticed their smoking bodies on the <laughs> battlefield of the 6502 board and uh, had to replace that. So that was a rework. I added some extra resistors in series to limit the current in the uh, pull-up transistors. 
but overall an exquisite job laying out the uh, schematic and uh, laying out the board artwork and executing on it. Uh, congratulations and thank you so much for showing this amazing work off. Well, thank you very much, Mike. All right. If people want to learn more about this, is there somewhere on the web they can go? Absolutely. Go to monster6502.com for project updates. Great. Take care. Thank you.